I tell people, you can play other places, you may even win other places, but there's nothing like being a Laker. Did you feel that um, coming in and putting on that uniform? Oh, for sure. And and it sucked because we ended up being the worst team in Laker history uh, oh. with the most losses. And uh, that was a dark year, man. That was that was a really, really dark year in terms of just what we thought the expectations were going to be. And then me, me and Kobe actually had like a good number of run-ins too um, about, you know, about how we were playing and things like that. But, you know, a lot of it has made like the virality of certain clips of like him yelling at me, Nick Young and Jay Hill, you know, in practice or me waving him off in the game or things like that. But it was, it was a tumultuous year. Talk to us about some of the run-ins because I, I, I've seen some run-ins. I want to hear what yours were like because you were someone who had the ball in their hands as well. And obviously there's an infamous clip of you waving him off. <laughs> but talk to us about some of the headbutt and you guys had and what kind of understanding you eventually came to. I mean, you know, and this is, I've never told this story uh, to this day. Not, you know, but um, I'm like wondering if I should. The, I, uh, you could, you should, <laughs> all the smoke. All the smoke. Talk to us now. Yeah. No, like um, at that time he was coming back from injuries and then he was also going through some injuries, but he was like, <laughs> He, you know, he was like 35 year old Kobe with a 25 year old Kobe mind. And so like he mm -hmm. had, he had it in him that he wanted to prove to the world, like all the reporters who say he couldn't come back from his Achilles or other injuries. Like he had this like intense level of like, I'm going to prove you wrong to the reporters. And so he was shooting like, you know, there are games where he shoot 45 shots and, and there, were, you know, it got to a point where there are a few games where he had shot us out of the game and and uh, again, it was just, he was at a point where he was going through so many tough injuries at an age that his body couldn't keep up with the demands. And so right. that's where like me and the rest of the team, like we, we had different, different thoughts. And so I remember I would go head to head with him and we would like, because he doesn't sleep, like he slept like two or three hours a night. And then I would be up because we would lose. So when we lose, like I would always be up at like three, four and I would be watching films. So we'd be texting at three in the morning, four in the morning, like, oh, like oh. arguing with each other, conflicting with each other. And it got to the point <laughs> where I was like, I told him, this is how it started. I said, look, you're, you're Kobe. Like I'm coming in trying to learn from you. Okay. So like, I'm okay with anything as long as you talk to me like like a man, like in terms of like, don't talk down to me like I'm a boy, talk to me like a man and respect me. And then, you know, he has always said like, you know, everybody just says what I want them to say. Like, it's very rare that somebody actually stands up to me. And so for me in that situation, as we were going back and forth, I finally had enough. That's why I waved him off that one time too. Cause I was like, you know, I've seen like, I don't want to go down this path again. We got to get something else going. We got to get some ball movement. But basically like after that text message conversation where we were going back and forth with each other, like we didn't speak for the last four months of the season. Like nobody knew, nobody on the team knew. But for me, that was like something I was willing to accept because I said what I needed to say to him. And if he didn't like that and he didn't, and he was like, I'm not going to engage in or like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I was like, all right, cool. I can I can live with that. At least I said what I needed to say. On the flip side, there were times when I was younger in my career where things would happen to me and I didn't say what I should have said. Mm, right. You know, and, and, and that was what like basically then you I would end up getting pumped. But the cool thing about this story is we didn't speak for the last four months of the season. And then the next year was his final year. And that's when I was with Charlotte and I was playing really well. And in the middle of the game is when we buried the hatchet and we said, like, you know what, it's over. And so we started talking to each other. We were asking about each other's families uh, like we were before. And then and then even after the game, we started texting again. He was giving me some advice on my game. And my whole thing the whole time was like, I, look, I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying when you talk to me, don't talk down to me. And I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to try to help this team in whatever way is possible. And for me, that was a big step because... You know, again, growing up in the Asian culture, it's like, don't, you know, don't, don't step, don't step on the toes of, of the boss or whatever. But for me, I'm like, I got to a point where I was like, look, this is who I am. And this is what I need to do as a player. And, and I feel like actually him not talking to me, I feel like that was actually a sign of respect. Like he was like, you know what? I'm pissed at you, but I actually respect you because you actually said something to me versus like so many other people won't. And that's right. why the next year, the next season when I was in Charlotte, like he was like, 
I mean, we, we taught, you know, it was just like, it like never happened. And he was just like, hey, we're back to normal. How's your family? How can I help? What, what, what what's advice what's can I give you? And, and that was, um, and that was my experience with him. And, and I learned a lot and I grew a lot. 